Hello. Have you been told that your child's IQ is fixed? Have you been told that this is their diagnosis and all you can do is make accommodations and strategies and possibly you felt like there's just no hope? Well, I'm here to tell you today that there is hope, that the brain can be changed, that I will help you on this journey, and we are in this together. I'm Dr. Carol Brown, the founder of the Equipping Minds Brain Development Center, and I have sat where you sit, desperately wanting to find hope for my son, who was struggling tremendously. And hearing that these were his scores and that I shouldn't really expect to see those change. And I didn't accept that. And I'm asking you to not accept that and to come with me on this journey. Let me partner with you. I have had the privilege of working with families since 1981 in various settings from summer camps to children's homes, as a social worker, as a private school teacher and headmaster to a reading specialist, and now as a cognitive developmental therapist and being able to work with children and adults of all ages, literally from three to 93, and all abilities, from gifted to Parkinson's, to strokes, to post-concussion syndrome, to fetal alcohol syndrome, to dyslexia, ADHD, specific learning disorders, autism, Down syndrome, verbal, nonverbal and could sit and give you an entire list, but basically anyone who is struggling with how they learn and how that impacts life and social skills and emotional skills and language and confidence and their memory. So many things we see impacted and it's not just enough to put a label on it. But we have to look at those underlying symptoms and to come in holistically, and we're going to look at what that means, to bring hope, to help form neural networks, to connect those networks, and to strengthen those networks. And I believe we are whole brain learners. And so as we are here for this session on developing, processing, and working memory and cognitive skills online, I just want to tell you that there is hope. And I would just want to encourage you today that God has given you your child and he has um, brought us all here together. And I think you're gonna find a community that can encourage and strengthen you. This is a journey that we're on. And so I want us to just kind of embrace this next hour, <laughs> but also um, just th these next few months. And I want to just thank you for being courageous for homeschooling this year. Um, I have homeschooled at different points that led private schools at different points. And I will tell you that the most challenging was homeschooling, but it was also the most rewarding. And so as we're doing this, the piece that we're going to bring in with Equipping Minds is how to develop the processing and working memory and these cognitive skills using games. But first, what is processing? 
Now, if you have had your child tested, maybe you had the WISC-5 done or the Woodcock-Johnson cognitive assessment and you're seeing processing scores. Or maybe you haven't had testing, but you know that your child has difficulty with possibly language processing in receptive or expressive language. That was my son's diagnosis. Or they have an auditory processing challenge where it is difficult to distinguish the sounds when they're learning to read. Maybe it seems like your child is saying, what, what did you say? I, I didn't follow that. Or you say 37 and they hear 73, or they have a hard time repeating words. Maybe you just said the word telemachus and they're not able to repeat what they heard. Or it could be something even shorter like giraffe and they're not sure what you just said. So there can be some auditory processing challenges and there can also be visual processing challenges. And so how they're tracking information, how they're processing letters and numbers, operational sounds in math. So any of those areas um, can impact that processing and, and it is multifaceted. But then if they are struggling with processing, that is gonna greatly impact their working memory. And working memory is that ability to hold on to those pieces of information that they're hearing or seeing and to do something with it. So if they have a word and it's a three letter word and they're having to hold on to the sounds and tell the order and the number and the sameness and difference, hold that in place to read or spell, but their working memory is weak, that may be incredibly difficult. Or students can know something in isolation, but then they have to remember the steps to a math problem and they keep forgetting a step. Or your child is having a hard time following multi-step directions. Maybe they remember the first thing you say or the last thing, but not the middle, or they reverse something. So those will greatly impact reading and writing and spelling and math and history and science. And they may impact all those subjects or just some of those subjects. Now, what I will tell you is there's not a perfect curriculum for reading. There's not a perfect curriculum for math, a perfect curriculum for writing, a perfect curriculum for language. Maybe you've already purchased a curriculum. And what I will tell you is it might be just fine. Many times people keep jumping from curriculum to curriculum to curriculum only to continue to hit a wall and they're just not progressing. Very much like if your child had an, or still has an IEP and they have given you um, accommodations and modifications and strategies. That's really not addressing the underlying symptoms to strengthen those cognitive areas, but they are just supports to get through. And what our focus is on is actually going in and strengthening those cognitive skills that are so crucial and foundational. Many times when schools are talking about common core, I'll talk about cognitive core, because if that is in place, then that can make learning, it can make listening to the dance instructor or the soccer coach, um, your music instructor, so much easier for your student. It can look like your child is not paying attention. It could look like your child's not trying, but if they are not 
processing things accurately, if they are not holding on to pieces of information, if they're not able to retrieve information from their long-term memory, to think about it in the present situation, academics can fall apart. So that's just a brief overview of processing and working memory. Um, some of the other cognitive skills are gonna be comprehension, that ability to read something or to hear something read and to picture that in your mind and remember what you just read and to hold on to that while you're hearing it, as well as your reasoning abilities, your problem solving abilities, and then your visual spatial reasoning. So those are some of the key components that you will see on testing. But it, like I said, if you haven't had testing, that's fine. Um, I have a learning screening and intake questionnaire that I'll show you where those are during this talk. And you can complete those for me and you can have a free consultation and we can talk through because we don't have to necessarily have a test to show you what you already know, <laughs> okay? Um, and just wanted to, to clarify that. If you also want some testing, that is something I can do. My doctorate is in education and there are, are many assessments I can do with you online. Um, but let's talk about that just a minute, online. Maybe some of your, your children have done some online therapy, maybe some online speech therapy or occupational therapy or online school. And maybe that's gone great or maybe it hasn't. What I wanna tell you is here at Equipping Minds, we have been doing online cognitive training with children and adults for over seven years. So when the pandemic happened in 2020, we, we were ready, so to speak. Um, we didn't need to change anything we were doing because we have already had this model in place and it's been incredibly effective and engaging and fun, <laughs> okay? Um, some of the benefits are you as a parent can be in the sessions and learn how to do this. And you get your own brain strengthened at the same time. You can also take what you're learning and do it with multiple children if you want to, which if you have more than one child, it is incredibly common for people to learn about Equipping Minds to either work with a therapist or you can do our online training and then you can take it over. Okay, so you can see some, there's quite a few different options to find the best fit for your family. And so just encourage you, we'll be able to um, explore those some and show you where that information is. The other benefit is you don't have to travel. You get to do it from the safety of your own home. And children, a lot of times, just feel more comfortable being at home. There are no health risks. You don't have to wear a mask right now. And that can be um, just very attractive for a lot of people. It allows us to work here at my home office. And that's allowed us to keep our costs, our expenses, incredibly um, reasonable as well. So as you might be looking at what we do and what the cost is, you might find it substantially lower than, um, than possibly some other options. But we wanna come alongside of you. And that's where you're also gonna find a free workshop that we'll look at as well. So when we are looking at all of this though, and we're looking at brain development, I want you to know that everything that I'm gonna share with you that we do at Equipping Minds is research-based and evidence-based. That 
the research in neuroscience has shown us that the brain can be changed. However, if you have a child with Down syndrome or you have a child with an intellectual disability, um, different neurodevelopmental disorders, that's where in spite of all the research in neuroscience saying the brain can be changed, you may fall into a group where you have been told that's not possible for your child's diagnosis. And what I'm going to tell you is, no, we cannot take away Down syndrome. Your child may still have autism. However, what we have found, our experience has shown us that we can increase the number of directions they can hold on to. We can help increase their ability to visualize images and letters and numbers. And we can increase their thinking abilities and their language and their social skills, which impacts behavior and confidence. And so we are able to see those changes happen. Now, of course, doing that is not for the faint of heart, okay? But it is fun. And so I want us to take a minute and let me show you where those resources are that you'll be able to access. Okay, so welcome to the Equipping Minds website. So you'll just go to www.equippingminds.com and this is where you can read more about our online cognitive training to increase those skills. More about who we serve and then our own son's story. And I will tell you through this long journey, he did end up graduating from college on the Dean's List, getting married, and he works for us and he has for over 10 years. <laughs> and so I can tell you that is not what we were told would happen when he was young. And it, it amazes me every single day to see where he is now. Um, you'll be able to come down here and you can see our um, upcoming conference that'll be April 19th through 23rd. Um, you'll be able to see our ROSES program, which is our online training program for parents and schools use this. And then here's an online study skills class. Now, if you happen to be at one of the homeschool conferences watching this, um, Clayton is also doing this same study skills class for that conference, and you'll have access to that. And if you're not and you're seeing this, then you can come here and um, purchase that for only $50. And it is well worth that and watch it over and over. And then you're also going to see the link to our YouTube channel and then our work with schools and taking a trauma-informed lens as we are implementing our cognitive program. And then a testimony of one of our adults who suffers from post-concussion syndrome. But when you come in here, I want to show you our, um, our online learning courses. And so this is something that you can access and our ROSES program is the one I want to show you. And this is where you have access to our professional development training that we do for schools. There's introductory videos. And then you can come in here and I'm just going to show you our teacher workbook. Um, a hard copy comes with the program, depending on which um, one you get. But in here, you will see our learning screening. And so I'm just gonna show you this right here. And we'll look at your primitive reflexes and we have parents complete these. And this is something that I would love for you to do so we can have that consultation. And then there's a vision screening and 
a balanced screening. And then here you're also going to see a learning screening that you would fill out for your student. And just email that back to me and I'll show you where you'll find that. What does it look like to do cognitive training online? Well, what it looks like, we do this holistically, is that we'll do the maintaining brains every day for four to six weeks for primitive reflexes, and then for 30 to 60 minutes a day doing the cognitive games. And so that could take um, 45 minutes a day. And what we have seen is that uh, schools will tell us that they will actually put Equipping Minds in first and make it a class. So I just got off a call with one of our schools that does Equipping Minds 30 minutes a day, K through six, and they are seeing fabulous gains academically in their students. So as you're looking at this, the workbook tells you adaptations and how to work with your students. And then there's a sample session to follow. Now every student will progress at a different um, pace, but we do give some sample sessions. And then we also have a linear look at this right here with the different games and how we would progress across those. And then we have different exercises and games. And I'm gonna pop over to one. Um, these are some of our tic-tac-toe boards with animals and numbers and letters. And these are the presidents of the United States, believe it or not. Um, here's a washing machine with a ton of clothes for George Washington. And then you will notice this is just ingenious with the book, Yo Millard Fillmore, that when you then go in to the next picture, the washing machine is there, but it's open and we see Adam swirling around. Um, and so our students are able to start to learn their precedents. And now I'm gonna pop over to one of their favorite pages. And this is the animals page. And they'll tell you the animals that they see. And then we have different directions that we do with our animals. So when we're giving directions, we'll say to a student, I see you drawing a circle around the bear. What do you see yourself doing? And they'll say, I see myself drawing a circle around the bear. And they'll do that. Now, if your student doesn't have language, then you'll be their voice. And um, we're just kind of working with them on that. And then after they can do one thing, then we would add two things. I see you drawing a circle around the bear. Then I see you drawing a box around the snake to keep him in. What do you see yourself doing? And they would say, I see myself drawing a circle around the bear. I see myself drawing a box around the snake to keep them in. And we would keep going with this exercise. And then we would just look at our symbols and I would ask them, so what animal did you see inside the circle? And they'll usually say a bear. What animal did you see inside the box? Oh, a snake. Now, I will tell you, when we're making our circle, you may have noticed I started at 2 o'clock and went up to 12 and back around, and that's helping to work on handwriting, but don't tell anybody that, okay? And then our box, and so when we're doing these symbols with the dry erase marker, the student is actually um, having a lot of fun because they just love using a dry erase marker and drawing circles and boxes and triangles and lines. And so it is um, amazing how it improves their handwriting. Now, one game that we use is called Blink. And we're gonna look at this and play it together, but I just wanna show you this. Here in the workbook, it will tell you the cognitive skill that this game works on with visual processing, working memory, attention, long-term memory, logic, and reasoning. 
and then what the challenge is, modifications that can be put in, and then the different um, connections to the classroom. It will increase the ability to follow multiple step directions, which everybody tells me that their students need, and communication. And there are 24 steps that you'll see here on how to play this game. Well, if we go in to our course and I come down to Blink, you're going to see 31 steps. Well, now, why is that when the workbook only had 24? That's because the workbook was finished in 2018. And I am continuing to add new steps. And so you simply go into a step. I mean, you would progress one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but I'm just popping over to number seven. And here you would see the cognitive skill it's working on, a summary of the direction, and then you would click on the video to be able to watch um, this step happen. And so you would be watching me doing this with a student and seeing how to play the game, how to do this step. Um, and so then there's also an advanced video for this step, an inspirational video, and some modificational videos that are in here. So this would be true of all of the exercises. And then if I go back to the course, I can see the different exercises and then I can mark them once I've completed them and keep moving forward. You're also gonna see classroom connections to critical thinking and logic and how we help build that to grammar, to history, to math, to reading, science, spelling, and writing. But all the different games are listed here with the individual videos for you to be able to watch and see how to implement that. Now, you can also go here to the shop. And this is where you can find the different ROSES programs. And ROSES is what we were just looking at. And there are some different options here with monthly payment plans of only $84 a month to 67 to 54. But we also have some free resources and I really wanna share this with you. So if you go to games to use for Equipy Minds, this is where you'll see a webinar that I did for actually public schools here in Kentucky and around the world when the pandemic happened. So April 2nd, 2020, and they wanted me to use common household items on how to work with students online. And so there's a free handout here and over three hours of training. And then here's another handout on uh, Quippy Minds to reach their full potential. These are the games that we recommend that you purchase from Amazon. And then there are 37 pages gifted from the 200 and six page workbook. And here's a sample lesson of what to do week one, week two, week three, and week four of what um, we cover in this um, handout and in the training videos. So encourage you to look at those. And then you can come down here and even see the links for the different games that you can get. Um, now, I did mention the forms, and so if you look under the parent menu, you can go to evaluation and forms, and this is where you'll see the learning screening and the intake questionnaire that you can send to me, and here's my email address to be able to do that. So I wanted to share those things with you, um, but I also wanted to come over and take you just for a minute to our YouTube channel. So if we pop over here, you'll see, you can go to YouTube and put in Equipping Minds. And here are the workshop sessions and you can come in 
and watch those sessions. They're right there. Um, you can see some examples of the different games as well over here with some of our students. And then some information on our conference and some testimonials as well. So I encourage you to spend some time there and take a look at that would be fabulous. Okay, um, so I hope seeing where all those free resources are for you is helpful. And I now want us to actually play some games. We recommend that you do this 30 minutes, five days a week. Like you heard me say, our schools do it for 30 minutes every day. They have just seen as foundational for learning. And I, I will tell you, we do have some parents who take this curriculum because it is a curriculum. Um, you know, my doctorate is in education. And so there is just so much in here that some parents will actually use this as their homeschool curriculum. Um, and so it's a great starting point. I had a 30 year teacher tell me um, after she went through the training, she came up and was just weeping. And she said, Carol, there's so many parents that I just feel like I need to go back and apologize to because I told them there was no hope. And she said, at first I was trying to figure out how would I fit this even into my day? And then I realized this is the first thing that needs to be in my day. And um, so she, you know, has implemented it in the school where she serves and that school has done phenomenal things with Equipping Minds. It's just been amazing. But um, I will tell you, we are passionate about equipping you as a parent. You know, we are privileged to train public schools, private schools, probably more homeschoolers than anybody else. Um, but also speech therapists, occupational therapists, psychiatrists, college professors, but the number one group is still training parents. That is where um, my, my passion is, is equipping you and coming alongside of you because this is your child and, um, and you're going to be able to take this and it is going to also help um, maybe even heal some academic trauma that maybe your child's experienced. If you have a child, um, whether biological or adopted, who has experienced any type of trauma, um, you may have read that playing games is a great way to help bring some healing there. And so we are very intentional. You heard me say we use the card game Blink. And if you bought Blink, and I hope you do, it's less than $6 on Amazon right now, and you read the directions, they would tell you one way to play it, and you would not be talking. And remember when we looked at the workbook, there's 24 ways listed. And when we looked on roses, there are 31 ways listed to play Blink, okay? Um, I just can't help myself. But how do we play it? Let me just show you so you have an idea. Because when we work with someone online, and like I said, you could choose to work with an Equipping Minds therapist online, or you could just do the free materials on YouTube and start implementing that way with the free handouts and never meet with me online. Or you could do our ROSES program where you do some online and then you're getting all the training so that you'll be able to take over. So there's a lot of different options. Um, just know that there is hope and I'm here to help you on this journey. So here we go. I would first ask this student, how many do you see? And if your child doesn't know their numbers yet, we'll, we're just gonna start with one. But if they do know them, we'll, we always use what the student knows. And that's how we build the brain. You have to use what the student knows. If you pull in what they don't know, it's gonna be frustrating. So we don't wanna do that, right? So we wanna take what they know. That is just key. I just can't tell you how key that is. Um, otherwise you, 
you'll see them shut down. Now, I will tell you when you do this, I always want you to go first and I want you to model because some of your students have failed a lot. And anytime you pull out anything, maybe they shut down because they don't want to fail and they aren't sure what the expectation is. So if that's your child, then, you know, let's talk. Um, I can't get everything here today, but you'll see a lot of that in the training videos as well. But um, yeah, so let's just say, how many do you see? One, two, three, four, and five. And then we would take our cards and you would take turns and you would go first and you would say, oh, four on four. And so you would simply come down and put four on four. And we always use language. And like I said, if your student's nonverbal, you're their voice. Three on three, two on two, three on three, one on one, one on one, two on two, four on four, five on five. And you would continue to sort by number. Well, then you would do color. So we have um, five numbers, but we have six colors. So we have purple and black and green and blue and red. And then we also have um, yellow over there. You can see that. There we go. And then we would simply say, oh, green on green, blue on blue, black on black, red on red, purple on purple, yellow on yellow, purple on purple, red on red, and you would sort by color. And then you would sort by shape. So what shape do you see? Most will say an X. Here, they'll say lightning, bolt, thunder, storm, zigzag, narrow path, <laughs> tangle, uh, mountain. For our purposes today, I'm gonna say lightning. Um, this is typically a circle. And here we have a triangle. And then we also have in this one, a diamond. And then the last one we're gonna have is a star. So those are our six shapes and we would sort those and you can do this even as a family around a table and take turns and say, oh, X on X, triangle on triangle, circle on circle, X on X, triangle on triangle, diamond on diamond, and sort by shape. Now, you may, you may say, wow, well, that looks awfully easy. Or you may be saying, wow, that looks awfully hard depending on where your student is. But what I will tell you is, whether you have a college student, whether you are a business professional with your the mom, whether you are nonverbal, we start everybody at the same place. We have everybody learn to sort by number and color and shape. And if they can do it well, great. We just want them to get faster. And if it's easy at first, guess what? That's okay. Because as they're sorting it, they're saying, oh, two on two, three on three, five on five, or red on red, yellow on yellow, diamond on diamond. Well, maybe they've never been right that many times in a row. And it's working on language processing. You're working on motor skills because they're using their hands. They're doing a visual scan. So you've got visual processing. It's focused attention. One minute you're sorting by number, then you switch to color, then you switch to shape. And when you're sorting by shape, you have to ignore number and color. So there's so much that is going on. And yes, you have to talk. But like I said, if they're nonverbal, then you're their voice. Now we're taking it up a notch to working memory. So we just did processing, but we processed 17 different things, by the way. 17, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a lot. Now those 17 things are now in their long-term memory and they get to retrieve those 
from their long-term memory. You get to retrieve those. So this is what we're gonna do. Tell me the number you see. Two, color, yellow, shape, circle. Number, four, color, blue, shape, circle. You ready to try? So number, color, shape. And the reason we do this order is because that's how we talk, because these are four black diamonds, or if you have two green apples. So we're also putting a pattern in the brain. So you ready? How many? Did you say two? Black diamonds. Five, purple, axes, two, purple, stars. How are you doing? Okay, now let's pretend your student makes an error and they say five, three. I would say, oh, that is three. But if this is five, whose turn is it? Oh, color, okay, red. Okay, nice thinking. Or if they said five, three, I might just pause the card and see if that's a clue, okay? Now the other thing you're not seeing is you can also have it down here. So they're saying five, red triangles, four blue circles. And those three piles can be really helpful. Now, eventually we actually play the game of blink, even though that is still playing blink. And when you do it, you'll put down two cards and then you can then match and by number, color, or shape. So I can say, I could go either way. I could say X on X or black on black. I'm gonna say black on black and X on X, five on five, lightning on lightning. This one has to wait. So I just set them down and then I can play, oh, three on three. And now circle on circle or purple on purple. Purple on purple, triangle on triangle, blue on blue, triangle on triangle, black on black. He has to wait, okay? Yellow on yellow, two on two. And that is how we can play that, okay, with Blink. That is probably one of the students' all-time favorite games that you are doing processing and you're doing it auditorily as well because you're hearing it. And if you're playing with somebody, you can be taking turns. Eventually, the students all do it where they're racing. And I just want you to hear me. I hope you are still on this um, and you have not left me, okay? But I will tell you, I have worked with students who've come to my office whose IQs were in the 50s and 60s and who were nonverbal, and I wasn't sure what they were going to be able to do. But you know what? They learned how to play blank. They were learning their precedence. They're learning their directions to the animals. They're learning, I mean, there's so much in this program and y'all, they are doing it. They're doing it and they're loving it. And they're so proud of themselves and it is impacting um, academics and abilities to communicate and follow directions and hold on and understand things in math and to improve their spelling and their reading and their writing. Um, there's just so much, there's so much. And I am just so excited for this time that you have now in homeschooling your child. 
Um, I'll tell you one thing a principal said to me actually earlier today. He said, I just thought if we taught them the right way that they would learn. And that wasn't the case. And so it's not about teaching to their learning style. It's about building their cognitive skills. And that's where he has landed. And, you know, it was just really kind of took me back when he said that today in our meeting. And as his school is seeing just the impact that Equipping Minds is having on their students. Um, so you can do that. We are now going to have some time to um, ask me questions in the chat. Once again, please, um, you know, fill out that learning screening and intake questionnaire. If you would like a consult, that really helps me prepare for that. And we can look at the best plan for your family. Please go and start watching the YouTube workshops, visit the Equipping Minds website. I know there's a lot there. Hey, read the research. If you love the research, it's published in a medical journal. You know, um, I, I went back to get my doctorate for one reason. Simply this, to have a voice for those who have no voice. Because my son did not have a voice and I had to be his voice. And I want to help be your voice and your child's voice. And we are in this together. There is hope. And I will help you. So thank you for joining me. And now let's um, send me some questions in the chat. <laughs>